our new aim is to integrate as many functions as we possibly can. So we know how to integrate polynomials already using the power rule. We also know how to integrate basic trigonometric functions, basic exponentials, logarithms, as well as a few other functions knowing basic integrals. Now we want to consider the integral of ratios of polynomials. These are called rational integrals. So let's consider two polynomials p and q with their respective degrees being m and n. And we will learn the strategy for evaluating the integral of p of x over q of x dx. So there are several cases to consider. First, if p happens to be the derivative of q, then the integral is simply the natural log of mod q plus c. If the degrees are small enough in this way, so m is less than n, which is less than or equal to 2, then uh, using an appropriate substitution, we can end up with one of these four simple integrals. If the degrees are larger than that, for example, uh, the numerator still has a degree less than or equal to 1, but the uh, denominator can be of degree n of a special type where it's ax plus b raised to the nth power, then we can still uh, use substitution u equals ax plus b and end up with one of these two integrals depending on the degree of the numerator. If um, m, the degree of the numerator, is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, then we need to do long division to um, get p over q be equal to a polynomial plus another polynomial r, the remainder, divided by q um, so that the, our original integral turns into uh, the one you see here, with now the degree of r being less than uh, the degree of q. And so for this last remaining uh, rational integral, uh, we are in this case where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator and then we use a method called the method of uh, partial fractions and this is what we'll see in a follow-up video. So this is the strategy in general. Let's solve some uh, rational integrals. Evaluate the following definite integral, pause the video and input your answer in the box. I hope you paused it and have inputted for, the, for this definite integral. So simply uh, substituting u equals um, 2x plus 1 uh, means that du is 2dx and when x is equal to um, 0 u is equal to um, 1 whereas when x is equal to 2 u is equal to 5. So then our original integral, the integral from 0 to 2 of 10 over 2x plus 1 squared dx turns into the integral from 1 to 5 of 10 over u squared and du is um, 1 over 2 d, uh, dx is 1 over 2 du. So what we are left with is 5 over u squared it's um, an antiderivative for that would be um, negative 5 over u. We need to evaluate this between uh, 5 and 1. What we get is negative 1 minus um, negative 5. So that's 5 minus 1, that's equal to 4. Let's look at the next question. Evaluate this definite integral, so pause the video and input your answer in the box. Note that there is already this factor of pi, so you only need to include its multiple. Okay, I hope you pause the video and realize this integral is equal to pi. So the way we can evaluate this, or one way, is to turn this integral into um, a basic integral using an appropriate substitution. That we can do if we first uh, factor out uh, that 9 from the denominator, so we write uh, 12 over 9 times 1 over, and if we do that we get x over 3 squared plus 1 dx, and so this uh, is uh, similar to the 1 over u squared plus 1 that we can integrate, so if we substitute u equals x over 3 here, then that of course means that uh, 3u is x, and 3du is 
is dx. And when x is equal to uh, 0, then u is equal to 0. Whereas when x is equal to 3, then u is equal to 1. And so this integral turns into an integral from 0 to 1 in terms of u. Uh, 12 over 9, 1 over u squared plus 1. And then the dx is simply 3 times du. We can uh, simplify it slightly. So this is uh, 12 over 3. That's just a factor of 4. So we have 4 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over u squared uh, plus 1 du. And this integral is 4 times the arc tan of u as u goes uh, from 0 to 1. So the inverse tangent at 1 is pi over 4, whereas the inverse tangent at 0 is simply 0. Therefore, we have 4 times pi over 4, that is pi. Let's look at the next question. Find the missing coefficients. So here in this problem, what you need to do is long division and find what the missing coefficients a, b, and c are. Pause the video and input their val values in the boxes. Okay, I hope you paused it and have found these values. Um, let's uh, do long division and see how we can obtain these values. So dividing x uh, to the 4 by x squared minus plus 2 plus x minus 2 is to be done as x squared x to the 4 is divided by x squared. That's x squared. Then we see, check what the remainder is. So multiplying x squared and what uh, the denominator gives us x to the 4 plus x to the 3 minus 2x squared. This we need to subtract from x to the 4. We get negative x to the 3 plus 2 times x squared. This remainder we need to divide again by the denominator. So um, minus negative x cubed by x squared is negative x. Th again, uh, let's check what the remainder is. So negative x times uh, x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times negative x times positive x is negative x squared. And minus x times minus 2 is my, uh, plus 2x. Let's subtract this from the remainder. We get um, 3x squared minus 2x. And this divi uh, divided by uh, the denominator. 3x squared by x squared gives us plus 3. And let's check what the remainder is. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times x is 3x. And, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And this, when subtracted from that, we, gives us a negative 5x plus 6. Therefore, the coefficient a is 3. The coefficient b there is negative 5 and the coefficient uh, c is 6. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.